Welcome back to Real Talk About Feminism podcast. You are here for a good episode because we are talking about women in racing. So if you have heard about Formula One lately, very trendy. So we're going to educate you guys so we can all just be racing girlies. You're going to educate us. <laughs> when I was in D.C. with you and Kendrick and you guys were talking about what was going on in the <laughs> racing world and I was completely oblivious, I was just playing with G because I was like, I literally know nothing about this except that you, Kendrick, and dad love it and are obsessed with it. And mom. And mom. Okay. Yeah, mom. Mom, I'm like, loop. yeah, mom knows, like, she knows a lot of stuff, too. Um. So, yeah, no, it's really fun. I'm excited to talk about it. I'm very new to the world of racing. Um, but we – so Kendrick introduced me to it, even though our dad has always loved racing. And I regret now not, like, fostering that. But, like, I don't know. I didn't – I feel like since the races are on Sunday, we'll get to that. But, like, the races are on Sunday most of the time. And so it's like we wouldn't watch it because we were Mormon. Yeah. And honestly, to me, like, I think it's cool to listen to you guys talk about it. But it's really not something that I would, like, seek out on my own. I think mm -hmm. it would be fun to go one day if I had that opportunity. But it's definitely not something that, like, piques my interest. But that's just me. Yeah. I am also very excited because the Olympics are starting. I think opening yes. ceremony is tomorrow yes. um, when we're recording this. But I also want to ask you, do you feel like racers are athletes? Oh, yes. Okay. Because I also agree with that. Like it's – I think it's a different type of athlete, but I do think that there is athleticism involved. And so right now I'm just like, okay, we are like – in the world of athletics. Yes. And I was telling Cleo, I was like, I love the Olympics. Like, you don't even understand. I was like, it will be on. Mm -hmm. It will be on. Like, yeah. Thank you, Peacock, because it's going to be on 24-7. <laughs> yeah, except for we have Peacock Premium. And I was trying to watch when, like, the trials were going on. And – I could never find anything about where to watch it. And so I was like, am I just like not on at the right time or what? I don't because know. So with the trials, I just did like YouTube recaps and that's how I oh, okay. got to know like what was going on. And I honestly haven't even looked on people. Okay. okay. Regarding I'll have the to Olympics, like, so. I'll dive into it. I mean, it has the Olympic rings on the logo right now. Yeah. So I know that's yeah. the case. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure Peacock is run by NBC, which is like the host of the Olympics type thing. Oh, okay. I don't know. I could be wrong, but okay. Well, yeah. yay. I know. I am so excited. And um, I just reposted this on our story, but this is the first Olympics where it's like the most equal amount of men and women. I saw that. And, and so, I didn't realize that. I know. And I liked like the little graph or like chart it was showing like of the comparison from like years prior. So interesting. Like it's crazy that we're hitting these like milestones with like gender and it's literally 2024. I know. We have so much to talk about. While we're talking about the Olympics, I wanted to briefly talk about Allison Felix and the work yes. that she's doing because I love I've noticed this Olympics so far the coverage has been much more geared towards like motherhood and women like coming back after having a baby. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's so cool to like also still pursue your dreams. And again, if you, if your dream is to be a mother, that's so great. But I know right. that a lot of these athletes, like they want to be moms and be Olympic athletes. Mm -hmm. And so they're still making it all happen. What I wanted to share about Allison Felix, if you guys haven't seen, she opened the first nursery for Olympic um, parents. And she partnered with Pampers to do this. And this is like the first time ever that this has happened. And I just think it's so cool to like make it also more like family oriented too, where like they get to have their kids with them there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I was thinking about, okay, <laughs> he's being distracting. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about 
when I saw that announcement, like, on the news, and it was saying, like, um, I think it said Paris Olympics among the first to, like, have a nursery or whatever. And I was really wishing that they would have, like, recognized Allison Felix in that, yeah. like, in the title because that's what I said to you. I was like, oh, yeah, I saw something about that. And you were like, she did that. Like, Yeah. Like, that was fully crazy. her. Yeah, that's amazing. And she's – obviously, I love her track and field girly, you know, my dream. <laughs> that never happened. Yeah. But – I'm just, like, obsessed with that. Like, good for her for, like you said, having both dreams and achieving both of them because that's what she wanted to do. I just love it. I love it. And especially – okay, have you seen – I didn't know about this creator before until, like, yesterday, but the ballerina farm girl? I saw – so when I was rotting for two hours before this, (laughs) I was seeing, like, a bunch of TikToks about it. And I listened to, oh my gosh, what is it called? Um, Her podcast. She also does Mile Higher. Kendall Ray. Kendall Ray. Okay. My girl. I love her. Yes, your girl that I found and I really love her now. So she did, I believe it was that episode because everything was sounding very familiar. And I was like, um, I think that she did this and I recently listened to it. She so, did an episode on that? I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but it was like the same thing. There was like a ballerina and they opened like a dance school or whatever. And like one of them was murdered or she was. Okay. Like, no, it, it's not that. Be- okay. No, no, no. Okay. There's two different ballerina things that I saw. Okay. okay. This is about like the trad wife ballerina. Because I was like, Kendall Ray does true crime. That's not that's not what this is. Um, oh. So basically, I'll give a summary to catch you okay. up. And I don't know that much about it because honestly, I was like, I don't want to be in this right now. I don't know. <laughs> so I kept seeing all these TikToks about an article from The Times. Okay. Talking about this creator and her husband. Okay. So pretty sure they're Mormon. <laughs> I'm like actually 99.9% sure. They live on a farm. They manage a farm, just them, the husband and wife. They have seven children. Okay. And they have no nannies. The husband Whoa. insists on not, not having nannies or outside help for the farm or the seven children. She's the only one that does. She's like a stay-at-home mom. So she is the primary caretaker. Okay. Basically, she was basically stalked by her husband. When he was trying to pursue her. (gasps) And literally the way that he like masterminded to meet her was, okay, his family's like billionaires. Okay. They have a lot of resources and a lot of money. Okay. He somehow like got his connections to figure out a a seat that she was in on a flight. It sounds insane. This is actually what happened. And Mm. he bought the seat right next to her on the plane. And he had been, like, trying to, like, reach out to her and pursue her for months. So he buys the seat next to her. Then she – so she went to Juilliard and as a ballerina. Okay. Okay. I think I'm mixing the stories because I have some of these details. But, yes. You are. So she's incredibly talented. Okay. Like, I've seen video footage of her, like, as a ballerina. You can tell it makes her so happy. Mm -hmm. She – had told him like when they officially started dating, I don't want to rush getting married. Like I, I want to be a ballerina. I want to pursue that dream. Mm-hmm. He, I don't know the right word to say this, but like basically he didn't care about her wishes and was like, no, we're going to get married like very soon. So they ended up getting married. They pushed up their wedding timeline. They got married. Then they had the seven kids. They like, he, she had all this like ballerina stuff. Like she wanted a studio and like her own space to like still dance and be creative while she was a mom. And he like shut it down. Okay. So I saw this TikTok and this was very recent. This was like a couple days ago and he got her a present. Wasn't even wrapped. It was in like an Amazon box. Wait, is it the egg apron? Yes. The egg apron. That's what I just saw. 
Yes. So that when you know the background, it's so heartbreaking when she's like, I hope it's tickets to Greece. And it's literally an egg apron to collect farm eggs. Yep. Yep. And I was just like, this poor woman. So I listened to so many creators like talking about this article and like giving mm-hmm. their take on the situation. And she, um, some people were like, well, what do you expect? Like she's a Mormon woman living out the Mormon yeah, doctrine, basically, like yeah. the Mormon expectation. And then other creators were like, but you can tell like she's so sad and depressed. And like she talked about right. in the article how exhausted she is and like she just wishes that she could have help, but her husband – basically, you're getting the point. Okay. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's like you're supposed to do everything. Like yeah. she can't have outside help. Yeah. Be, grow your own food. Do everything. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It was just heartbreaking to me because I was like – here we see like Allison Felix, for example, and like all these other moms who are living out their dreams and also being fantastic mothers. Yeah. And ballerina farm lady doesn't get to do that. Yeah. She's literally silenced. Like I just felt so bad. So it's just interesting. Like there's a very stark difference. And I think that just shows like who, who you choose to be with can dictate okay. a lot of things. That is very true. I'm actually glad that you brought that up because – Yeah, I was seeing all this stuff today. Disregard everything I was saying. That's a whole different thing. (laughs) I don't know. Kendall Ray, Um, we love you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we love you, Kendall Ray. Um, But it is very true because in that video, she keeps bringing up – she's like, so tickets to Greece? And he he said something at one point, like, um, came all the way from wherever, some country, the package – And she was like, so it's not tickets to Greece. And like she was like kind of like laughing while she was still unwrapping. And I was just like sad. And now like I know more of the backstory. I was kind of like, okay, that's a weird like weird gift. Okay. But like I guess if she's a farmer. Yeah. Yeah. Practical. But now like knowing the backstory more, I'm like, okay, that's awful. Yeah. I did not read the full article. This was, like, my take on what I saw on TikTok. Yeah. Disclaimer. But I'm pretty sure, like, I gathered the whole story of, like, what's going on and, like, the controversy with it. It's just so sad. Yeah. It's – uh, it, Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I I hope they do, like, a special on Netflix about it. I feel like that's got to be coming. Come on. I mean, I would hope so, honestly. But, yeah, let's just, like, bring more awareness to this because that's – Probably not really an uncommon situation, especially with if she grew up more or if they are Mormon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Like the seven kids, come on. I know. I'm like, who has seven kids? Um, I am really loving, like, okay, loving is the wrong phrase, but I am ready for the crazy Mormons to be exposed and the, all like there's like all these crazy stories and these people just like happen to be Mormon that are coming out like the yeah Judy, give an example um <laughs> eight passengers Jody Hildebrand and Ruby Frankie Ruby Frankie yeah yeah like that like that's insane and so horrible and awful And they were literally influencers. Like, literally, that is honestly the more I see on social media about like how gross the world is. Mm -hmm. I hate right now, that's how I feel. I hate religious organizations who hide under the fact that they worship God or they worship this higher power. And they're a powerful organization. So they have a lot of influence and pull. And I hate when people say like, oh, well, the church is perfect, but the people aren't. Because I'm like, no, the people make up the church. Right. Like, So I just have so many opinions. Like the whole like crazy influencer, like Mormon thing is so accurate because you just never know what's going on. And the people who hide behind the religion, especially Mormonism, like people have high expectations of Mormons, I think. Mm-hmm especially when you're portraying yourself on the internet. And so it's so crazy when stuff like that comes out and it's horrible. Like I'm sure those children are definitely not going to be Mormon. Maybe, maybe some will be like, well, God helped me through this struggle, but that's a different, 
take on it. Um, but if it was me, like I would denounce religion because it's like, how can you say that you are Christ? Like, how can you say that you follow God when this is what you're doing? It's mm-hmm. honestly horrifying. Yeah. I know. I like there's it's honestly like the people on social media, like there are so many Mormons I know out there. And like another example I was thinking about is um who which I haven't seen her stuff in a while, but Taylor Frankie Paul, I think that's her name. Oh uh, yeah. I know you I don't like her. I do not like her. But the last that I saw, she she did you see the whole domestic violence scandal? I her? think so. She got arrested so. for it was a, a while ago, right? It was that was a while ago. She got arrested for domestic violence and then um with against her boyfriend and yeah, now who, they have a baby together. Yeah. Literally. I'm like that is so fucking toxic. Like I know. I, that is I can't toxic. But like that's kind of the same thing like she's like she talks about being Mormon. Well, th- mm. I haven't seen her stuff in forever, so I don't know. But, I've like, watched her on was, Instagram. <laughs> you did. <laughs> um, she was talking about, like, being Mormon and stuff, but it's not like she did any, any of the church stuff. But, like, I think a lot of people hide behind that Mormon <sighs> title. Not title, but, like, no, the Mormon honestly, mask. Though. Yeah, that's a good way like, to put it. Yeah, it's like, oh, like – Everyone knows that, like, the Mormons are, like, goody-goody and, like, you know, they do all this humanitarian work, blah, blah, blah. They're not a cult. But, like, it's so easy to hide behind it because everyone thinks that. And then there's these people who are are actually doing evil things or just living a normal life and hiding behind that mask, you know? Like, it's just – it's toxic and I hate religion. I know. It's so bad. It's so, so bad. Anyways, (laughs) Anyways, <laughs> yeah, moving on. Um, yeah, I had to bring up ballerina farm girl because it's just such a stark difference. Yeah. Uh, okay. But another win for us, Kamala. <gasps> hashtag know. Kamala24. I, know. I am so excited. And I honestly, I'm upset with the haters right now because people who are saying, like, well, you're only voting for her because she's a woman. It's like, Yes, but also she's not a convicted felon. She's not a rapist. I agree with most of her stances, especially on reproductive health and abortion. Yep. And she happens to be a woman. (laughs) Yeah, like, sue me, you know? Yeah, I'm like, we've only been waiting for this since 1776. No, literally. I... I texted you the other day. (laughs) I was like, I just want to like, I want to hold hands and while we drop our ballots. And (laughs) I know, I know. I was like, female president. Like, I was like, best are you gardening right now? (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, yes. But like, I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, I was just feeling that fire. I saw this statistic today and it was like the, the poll, the amount of, registered voters gen z registered voters went up by like 700 percent or something after that was announced yeah and she raised i think it was 81 million dollars in donations like within 24 hours of her announcement Mm -hmm. i was like this is what we need like fuck donald trump yes he is horrible he's a horrible person and i know that like when biden was still in the running people were like well Joe Biden's not great either. And I agree. Like my vote was going towards Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Because I was like, I can't, I can't like safely vote for Trump or Biden. No. And I know majority of Americans felt that way. Yeah. So this is definitely what we need. And I'm like, you know what? We need some female leadership. And I have been thinking about our interview with Mary. Yes. And just how much we can really use that right now. Like literally feminine phenomenon. I'm so excited. (laughs) I know. I know. I cannot wait. So after that announcement happened, um, they changed the date of the Women's March. So it's November 2nd. And I'm like, November 2nd at the Capitol. I hope she's freaking there. I hope she's there. Like, oh my gosh. How could she not be there? Yeah. Yeah. 
So I'm very excited about that. And like, I'm just, I'm feeling so hopeful because I'm like, we can do this. We can make this change. And I think, um, I saw this video today about like her campaign slogan and I think it's never going back. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I was just like, everyone was like chanting it, like never going back. And she was like chanting it too. And I was like, I feel like I'm about to cry because like, I'm feeling hope. I'm feeling hope. That's what it is. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. hopeful. Like you, everyone, we need to get out there and vote. You need to register to vote. If you're not registered, go register right now. I registered online a few days ago. It's so easy. It's so easy. And so, it's also very easy to vote. So very make sure your vote. address is updated and everything so that yep. you can actually vote. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I was dreading November. I honestly I was. Like, I was dreading just because it creates so much, like, discourse and hate between everybody. And it's horrible. So. I know. I can't. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Kamala 2024? 2025? Yes. 2024. 2024. 2024. <laughs> Yay! Can't wait. I know. Well, speaking of DC, I want to recap my trip out there. Yes. It was so fun. It was a very quick turnaround. Yeah. But um, I got to see your new apartment, which I loved. Thank you. It was very fun. What did we do? We So the we- first like full day... We went to D.C. Was that Friday? Yeah. Yeah. We had a museum day. Yeah. It was a museum day. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. My highlight was the National Gallery of Art. Same. I I learned so much. I took so many pictures of things that I want to go back and research. Mm -hmm. The art was so beautiful. It was, like, honestly a very, like, peaceful, quiet vibe. I loved it. It was. And, like, (laughs) we had also come from – the Natural History Museum, and there was, like, a lot of kids and, like – So many field trips. So many field trips and, like, stressed out adults that, like, I would make eye contact with them and it was, like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to be there ever. No. (laughs) Like, (laughs) like, very chaotic. And so then going to, like, the National Gallery of Art was just, like, you're right. It was so peaceful. We literally saw, like, a wedding. There. Yeah, that was so cute. Yeah, like I a very traditional a video, wedding. Yeah, I got a video of like the crowd watching and clapping. It was so cute. It was so hey, cute. Side note, I need to talk about this. I my for you page has been filled with like hashtag hope core. Hope core. And it's literally just a bunch of feel good videos. Oh yeah. And that like for a week now. I didn't know what Hope Core was, but that was a Hope Core moment where I was like, okay, faith and humanity restored. You should post that and do hashtag Hope Core. That's cute. Yeah, because, like, honestly, that's how it felt in the moment. Like, I was just like, oh, yes. I love yes. being part of this. No, honestly, I was like, we are here in this moment. We are here with them, <laughs> like, in this moment. We shared a special moment. But, um, okay, yeah. yeah. So that was fun. We did that. We went to Old Town Alexandria the next day. Yeah. yeah. And that was like really overstimulating and hot. Honestly, it was. And I found a hair in my food. Okay. We went to honestly like the worst place I've ever eaten. <laughs> Not ever. The worst place I've eaten in several months. I can't even remember the last place that was bad before this. Um, it was so bad. I left a review. So that you was did. disappointing. Yes, I left a review. Good. I said the only reason this place got a three star. Well, I gave ambiance three stars. I said the only three star I gave was for the ambiance. The food was horrible. The service was horrible. Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah, it was That's rough. very honest. It was. And like it was. And we had been walking for so long and it started raining and it was hot and we were all just ready to eat. So yeah. I'm pretty sure that made it worse, but oh well. But like be, no, because Kendrick had been there before and it was terrible service. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I was telling Khalil, like we went to that restaurant and I was like, come to find out Kendrick had eaten there the night before. And he was like, Why did y'all go? I was like, we were starving. Like 
Yeah. It was there. It was right there. And yeah. 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 That was just – it was fun though. And we ended up like stumbling into this – um torpedo museum that is like an art gallery now with like all these independent artists it's like a, they all have their own studios and they sell art and they make art and it's just so yeah, cool so cool I love that yeah that was yeah. fun and like I was looking I don't even know why I was looking at like random stuff in the area but that came up as like one of like the big things and I was like wow we just stumbled upon that well, it was busy when we were there. It was busy, yeah. So, but it was fun. It was cool. Yeah, we posted some cute pictures on Instagram. So go follow us at Real Talk About Feminism Pod, and you can see some of the pictures. Yes, that was a cute post. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I want to talk about a couple things before we get into our obsessions. First, on Spotify now, if you listen on Spotify. You can make comments on the episodes. So they did away with like the interactive Q&A. I think they still have polls, but you can make comments and then we can see them and we can reply to them. So that's a way to engage with us. Like, please leave your thoughts on the episode. And especially if it's a topic like um, last episode, like becoming cliterate, like please share like your experiences. And if you want to read the book and just like engage with us that way, I think that's a really cool tool that they implemented. Yeah. I, I, so once they announced that feature, I went back into this, like our end of it and all of the past like type answers, like in question boxes are showing up now as like comments. And so I was like responding to a few and I was like, okay, I love this. Like, this is so fun. It's so So, much better. Yeah. Like it's so much more interactive. I love how it's a platform now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. yeah, if you are not listening on Spotify for podcasters or Spotify, highly recommend because you can watch video on there. They're making it just like very integrative and a really nice user experience. So. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like an Apple podcast girly, but there is – I do listen to Mile Higher on Spotify because I specifically love the video, the video. aspect. So. Yeah. I am also yeah. an Apple podcast girly too, but lately I've been doing Apple podcasts or YouTube and I'm like, why am Same. I not going on Spotify? Really? Same. I, I have been listening on YouTube because there's this podcast I found. It's called Fantasy Fangirls and Ooh. they do like recaps of they've done Akatar or they're doing Akatar right now and they did Fourth Wing and I just finished Iron Flame. So I'm like going and Ooh. listening obsessed in my little fantasy world, mm-hmm. but I love the video aspect. Like I wasn't a video podcast girly before and now I am. So I know. if you like the video, you guys can watch us on Spotify or YouTube. Yes. Or YouTube. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, I know you have an announcement, but I want to briefly just talk about Sonia Massey and her murder because it's going around the news right now and it's extremely heartbreaking and terrifying. Um, So unfortunately she is murdered. So I feel bad saying like our condolences go out to her family, but this was a completely um, senseless act that could have been prevented. So if you aren't familiar with what we're talking about, like go search and do research on social media because it's the body cam footage was horrifying. I wish I went to watch it because it was extremely scary and yeah, awful. Just to add a little bit of context, I saw this video today and this is from the creator Crutches and Spice on TikTok. So I'm just going to play it because they put it really well. He had paranoid schizophrenia. Now pause. If you heard me say that and thought that I was justifying why she was shot by police, that's ableism. If you heard that and you said to yourself, well, you know, I can get, I can see why the cop was so frightened. That's ableism. When the cops first reported to her family that she had died, they first said it was due to suicide. Now I want you to put those two things together. Sonia Massey had paranoid schizophrenia and the cops involved in killing her told her family that she had committed suicide you can i'll repost the video so that everyone can go watch the full thing but like i have thoughts share your thoughts 
I did know about that diagnosis and I have seen people trying to say, well, this was a justified shooting. It was not. It was not. The police force no. need more training with mental health crises. Also, I did know that they told her family that it was suicide, which was outrageous to me. That was horrifying that they tried to cover this up, especially because the officer who murdered her did not have his body cam footage on. So that's very telling, mm -hmm. extremely telling. So I do not think that there's any way we could justify this at all. And I don't understand why some people are saying that it could be because it was so senseless, like just watching the video footage and seeing how quickly he pulled out his weapon when in my opinion I thought she was being like sarcastic and making a comment I did too and that's like and I, I my reaction was literally wait what yeah and especially knowing like her diagnosis like I knew that going into the video so I had that context I know some people didn't but I was, didn't that was insane to me that like he pulled his weapon so quickly so quickly and that's what's scary yeah, and also, like, we could go into this for so long. Yeah. It is such an injustice, and they obviously knew it was wrong. They tried to cover it up. That mm. the history, the employment history of that oh, officer God, yes. is horrifying and just really, like, makes you question, even though we were already questioning, but question even more the requirements that go into becoming a police officer. And I just, I just feel so, it makes me so scared because like, obviously we look at like other situations like Elijah McClain was, mm -hmm. uh, was autistic and mm -hmm. was killed by the police. Mm -hmm. And there are so many situations where like mental health or disabilities come into play and mm -hmm. police officers are not trained well enough and honestly have too much power. Mm -hmm. And so that is why these situations are all too common and it's not okay. It's not okay. One more thing about the officer. He had two DUI convictions. So I'll just leave that there. And he was still an officer and carried a badge. Um, I, there definitely needs to be more training on, um, not just like mental health and mental health crises, but also like hidden disabilities. Like you were saying, it's very common. Like there's more awareness about it now. Pe more people are being diagnosed, like especially people on the spectrum. And so it's extremely concerning. Um, yeah, I saw a TikTok of a mom who, um, had a neurodivergent child and she, made a bracelet and a card like a laminated card for the child saying um like basically like I am autistic like please keep this in mind while you're interacting with me or like please show this to first responders yada 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 and I just yeah. thought that was a really good idea because you wouldn't know they are hidden disabilities they're called that for a reason yeah exactly yeah I totally agree with you so sending love to her family truly horrible and something that did not need to happen at all at all it's awful so that's been on my mind because it's just really heavy and sad yeah um but <laughs> moving on to our it girl summer updates <laughs> like there's never a good way to transition no well I am in week two of my it girl summer and that is we're focusing on physical health. And so my current check-in, I am not doing great. <laughs> I am not doing great on my physical goal. And it's okay. I but yeah, I was like I need to be honest about this on the podcast when I check in because like my goal, I set a goal that just to me I'm like I'm putting this in my own head, but it sounds so simple and easy. But I think what I need to do is I need to do it in the morning instead of the evening or after work. Because once I'm done with work, I'm, you know, I'm out. I'm down and out. Yeah. What is the goal if you want to share? It's a 10-minute 
walk a day. Okay. Well, and let me say let me say this to you. Part of it, girl, summer is it's your own course. Yes, and it's literally just for you. So yeah. to everyone, to all our it girls, it's it doesn't matter. Like the we literally say this in the the PDF is it doesn't have to be this like strenuous thing. It's literally whatever you want. It can be diet. It can be exercise. It can be skincare. It can, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I needed that reminder. So yeah, I think what I need to do is just swap it. So um, I do it in the morning. So tonight I'm going to do a quick little yoga flow. And then tomorrow morning I'm going to get up because the gym is like literally right there. I can see it from the window. So yeah, I'm going to reset myself tomorrow. I am going to do my walk in the morning. But that is my week two so far. I printed out my It Girl tracker, which if once you buy the course, you'll see it. I put it in a frame with a dry erase marker so I it can update so cool. it every day. And it honestly just like – it looks like a piece of art. Like it, it looks cute. It looks like an accessory. So. Yeah, it honestly is really aesthetic. And I love your whiteboard idea. I'm stealing that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should steal it. So yeah. Go get your It Girl Summer, only $10 for the full course. It's self-guided, so you do it on your own time. And I'm doing it right now, and I'm loving it. So, Also, one last thing about It Girl Summer. It doesn't have to be summer. <laughs> you can yeah. do it whenever. <laughs> True. Yeah, it'll be it's there on, all year. So Yeah, it's up on our website. Um, I'll put the link in the show notes so you guys can go check it out. But it really is like a $10 all-inclusive like self-guided course. It's a wellness course. So if you're feeling like you need a little motivation, you need to amp up your it girl energy, go buy it. Yes. And you'll get some – you'll get check-ins from us because there's videos included in this year's course. Yeah. So while there's no, like, virtual meetups, there – we check in through video. So you will see us <laughs> – that was so of each week. I know that was fun. I think it's fun to still be able to like be connected in some way. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> we need to do our obsessions because we have not even gotten to the episode yet. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Obsessions. Well, mine is um the Trader Joe's four count ciabatta rolls. <laughs> They're so good for sandwiches. I have been putting them in the freezer, so I just, like, make the sandwich, like, from frozen in the oven, and it's really good. Mm -hmm. Toasted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fine. Okay. That's fun. I love that we did obsessions. Like, we introduced this because it's the most random shit ever. Okay. <laughs> My obsession for this week is a show on Amazon Prime called My Lady Jane. Yes. Everybody, please go watch it. I need to talk to somebody about it. It is I am obsessed with it. It's funny. It's like in the Regency era type, like royalty vibes. It has like romance. It has action. It's so good. Honestly, one of my favorite shows I've ever seen. Truly. I'm like dying okay. for season two. So I highly okay. recommend. It's called My Lady Jane. Okay. I'm going to watch. The only reason why I haven't started it is because one, I forgot. Two, <laughs> I have to sign in to Prime on the TV. But once I do... I will watch it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Side note, you – so we both share the Amazon Prime account, right? Mm -hmm. It is so chaotic. Am I wrong? Like our yeah. Amazon is so chaotic. It's chaotic. And like ev like literally all the time, it's like moving. I feel bad because I'm like, today I moved a bunch <laughs> of your stuff that was in the car into – the freaking save for later. Save for later. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's really good. I know. And literally this morning I moved all that stuff back into the cart because I get paid tomorrow and I buy it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got paid today and that's why I got what I got today. Oh my gosh. It's so funny. We're going to take a quick break to talk about our sponsor, BetterHelp. There's a lot going on in the world right now and we can all benefit from having someone to talk to. Whether you need to work through a specific trauma, talk through a big decision, navigate relationship issues, are struggling with anxiety or depression, or just need someone to talk to, BetterHelp is here for you. It's a super easy process. You sign up and get matched with a therapist tailored to your needs. There's financial help available if you qualify, and their rates are affordable to ensure that you get the help you need. 
BetterHelp has given our listeners 10% off your first month. Use code RTAFPOD for 10% off therapy services. And you can also click the link in our show notes to get there very easily. Again, that's code RTAFPOD for 10% off therapy services. Okay. okay. I'm going to share our feminist highlight for this week. And this is a first, but today's feminist highlight is actually a band. And its name is Voice of Brace Pot. Bear with me on the pronunciations throughout this. Um, but Voice of Brace Pot is an Indonesian all-girl Muslim metal band. Ooh. And they recently made history by being the first Indonesian band to play at Glastonbury, which is a festival in England. It's like a huge a big festival. One. SZA headlined um, a, a couple like other really big names headlined. Okay. The three band members' names are Yus Siti Asia, who's the drummer, Widi Raha Ramawati, who's the bassist, and Marcia. They have been praised by the likes of Rage Against the Machine, who's a big name, whose guitarist Tom Morello said he watched one of their videos 10 times in a row and was just blown away by it. Also, they were praised by Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers, and he tweeted one time, I am so down with Voice of Race Pot. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I just realized it's bass prot, not brace pot. So I apologize. <laughs> I'm not going back and redoing that. Um, voice of bass prot. So I'm going to give a little background. I found an article that I will link in the show notes as usual. It's a BBC article. And I definitely recommend checking it out because this band is so cool. So Marcia and CT were friends in elementary school. And then they met Weedy in middle school. And then the three of them were often sent to the counselor's office for rebellious behavior. From the article, quote, it was in this unlikely place where their love for heavy metal took root. They struck up a friendship with the counselor, Father Ursa. Quote from them, we listen to music from our counseling teacher. We get an adrenaline rush when we listen to heavy metal. And we thought it would be so cool if we can cover these songs. Ursa said that he realized the girls were not rebellious in the same way as some other teenagers who might take drugs or get into trouble. Instead, they often spoke up for what they felt was unfair in school. Quote, they opposed the system and often clashed with their teachers. Their statements were then considered provocative. That's a quote from him. In 2014, Ursa encouraged the girls to express their emotions through music. He introduced Marcia to the guitar, Weedy to the bass, and built City a makeshift drum using unwanted parts left behind by the school's marching band. Quote, we let our anger flow through our music because we don't want to get in trouble by getting angry with others. The band credits Ursa as their founder. He was the first to publish their music on YouTube. Today, they have 360,000 subscribers on YouTube and 230,000 followers on Instagram. I want to plug in my own thought real quick. I love the like school counselors and teachers who truly care about their students in this way. Mm -hmm. I was so inspired by that. Yeah. So the band has faced a lot of backlash, though. Quote, some people in their town dominated by conservative Muslims did not respond well when they ventured into heavy metal. Marcia once hit on was once hit on her head by a rock attached to a note telling her to, quote, stop making the devil's music. About 87 percent of Indonesia's population are Muslims. West Java, which is where they're from, is among the most conservative provinces and includes denominations that forbid music and singing. Some people find the combination of hijab wearing women and heavy metal music particularly provocative. They also have themes of their frustration with the patriarchy and male gaze in their music lyrics. I love, I'm going to be listening. Yeah, it was so cool. I came across that article and I was like, this is something that I've never seen before. Yeah. Talk about this. Yeah. I love that. Okay, I can't wait to listen. We can put their Instagram in the show notes. Yes, for sure. Okay, getting into the bulk of today's episode, believe it or not. 45 minutes later. <laughs> um, so like I told you guys at the beginning, we're finally getting to women in racing. So, okay, I wanted to do a little racing 101 um, to you. start off. Yes. So, and like I said, I'm very new as a fan to all of this. So I learned a lot. And I could be, like, I'm not, like, I'm not an expert, okay? (laughs) So That's how we felt with the WNBA 101 episode. Yeah, but you did so good, so. Okay. 
Um, okay. So I am I found this article on Williams Racing website and they're a team. And so um I I thought it was like a really good way that they put it. So they were talking about the the racing ladder and the basically like Formula One is like the one that's trending. It's like the biggest one. And that's probably what you've heard of or mm-hmm. like NASCAR. Um, so I'm not talking about – well, we are talking about that a little. Um, but anyway, so Formula One, that's probably like the racing that you've seen if you've like seen videos on TikTok or Instagram. And so this is kind of like the ladder to get to there. Um so first you and this is like from what I was reading the general path that most people go. Okay. So first you start with like karting and formula regional racing. So this it it's good because it provide and this is like kind of like the little carts that mm-hmm. you're like low to the ground. Um so this type of racing, it provides a basis and understanding of racing dynamics, and it's essential for developing quick reflexes, precision driving, and racecraft. So it's really an intro, but you still need to like have precision and like learn some basics. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a good start. Um, The other reason why it's where a lot of people start is because it's relatively simple and relatively affordable. All of the the whole world of racing is very expensive. So this is like a good way to get started. Okay. Um I would not expect that. Expect the racing to be expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you literally have to have like crazy amounts of money. Like wow. yeah. So like yeah, it's crazy. We'll get into it. Um so um yeah, that is kind of like ladder one or ring one of the ladder. Next is formula three. So it goes karting and formula regional, formula three, formula two, formula one. So pretty, okay, uh, you know, self-explanatory. But formula three is a springboard for aspiring drivers that are coming from national or regional racing to international racing. So instead of just being in your area or like in your country, you're going internationally. And that's the big difference. Um, the Formula 3 cars are less powerful than Formula 2 cars, obviously. Um, so there's simpler aerodynamics. That's like the main difference. And it also introduces DRS for the first time, which is the little wing on the back, I think. Okay. Yeah. Babe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, it's, it's the wing on the back. That is what he told me last race we were watching. And I think I'm like pretty confident in that. So it's yeah it's the little wing on the back that they put, can put up and down so that's the difference between formula 3 cars and formula 2 but formula 2 racing itself is it's most often the final hurdle for race aspiring formula 1 racers to get over um and reach the top it so it operates as a spec series meaning all teams use identical specification chassis and engines to bring a level playing field. So this means that the emphasis is placed squarely on the driver's skill rather than how fancy and fast their car is. Okay. Which makes the most sense to me. I'm like, okay, like, wouldn't we want to see, like, the driver's skill? Right. Yeah. So, um, that's the big difference between like formula one and two and then formula two and three. Um, the other big difference is that unlike formula one, which has sprint weekends at certain rounds, formula two 
always has two types of races, a feature race and a sprint race. So I'll go into that a little bit more. So just keep – put a, a pin in that. <laughs> um, okay. And then lastly, we have Formula One, which is the highest class of international racing um, for single-seater formula racing cars. So all of the formulas, they're all formula racing cars, but they have the different like F2, F3, F1. Um, so the, the reason why F1 is like so popular and like the most popular is because it's not only about the skill of the drivers, it's also about the mechanics of the car. And so this like that is just like very it, it's a whole like another aspect of mm -hmm. the sport and i think it's really cool because the that was really putting into perspective for me like how integral each aspect of the team is because when i watch it i'm like i see all the, like the engineers and they're all like very involved but i never really realized like that was the big difference mm -hmm. and so that makes sense to me yeah, it's cool. Um, so in um in Formula One, there's a total of 20 drivers and 10 teams that are currently in the Formula One grid. And there's two cars per team. Um, and so this is where like money gets involved because obviously if you have more money then you can get make a better car you can like afford better engineers and then you'll have a better team and so then you're like okay for example like Max Verstappen is on Red Bull right now and he's the one that's like been winning all the time and nobody can beat him but now, like, there's actually people that are starting to beat him. So, um, like, Lewis Hamilton, he won a Grand Prix recently, the British Grand Prix, which was a few weeks ago at this time. And he is switching teams next season. So, I believe he's going to Ferrari. Um, but he's switching teams. And so, like, this – he has won a lot of championships in his life, but – with the current team he's on, he hasn't been like doing as good because his car isn't as good. And so okay. the hope is like he'll switch teams and then they'll have more funding, better car, and he'll have a better season because he has like been the champion. Mm -hmm. So that kind of like is an example of how the, the mechanics and the individual racer skill comes into Formula One together. After that little recap, I just wanted to quickly highlight a few really inspirational um, female racers that stood out to me. Um, and there's a lot. So in the resources that we link, go and check out those articles because there's a lot of inspiring women in racing. Um, but first, I want to start out with Michelle Mouton. Um, this is a shout out to Kendrick. He introduced me to her, but she's very, very iconic in the world of racing. So she is French and she competed with the factory Audi team in the World Rally Championship and finished second in the Driver Championship in 1982. And the racer that she came second to is like a very iconic, like very well-known racer and so it was a really big deal that she came second in the whole championship. That's so cool. Wait, was this championship just women? Like, is it no? This was women only league no. type thing. No, because there's not that many. Back then, there wasn't that many female racers, and even now, there still isn't. There's um, some series. Um, it's like a it's a race like NASCAR where they race those types of cars and they have all women's races, but it's a very new thing inspired by one of our, one of the women that we're going to highlight. Cool. So yeah. And this was in 19, in the 1980s. And so, yeah, this was an all man, all men's race. She was the only woman and she won second in the world championship. Wow. Um, when she left 
the rally racing, um, by the time she her she left that, she had four victories to her name, and she remains the last woman to compete in the pinnacle of rallying, which is really cool because that wasn't, like I said, in the 80s. Um, she is also a class winner at the 24 hour of Le Mans um race and this is a really big deal. So that is a really big um track and it like it says it's a 24 hour race and it's a relay. So it's like, you know, they each race for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And obviously very challenging because it's 24 hours. And so a like I said, she was a class winner. So a class winner is a car that wins its class in the race. The race awards prizes to the winners of each class as well as an overall winner. So the number of classes have changed over the years, but as of July 2024, there are three classes. So she, the class that she won was like the second overall. And so that's a really big deal because she was a winner of one of the classes at this race. So good for her. Okay. Um, lastly, shout out because in 1984 and 1985, Audi of America asked her to represent their their team at the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb in Colorado. Oh, that's so cool. Iconic. Um, yeah. So I'm going to make a post and – the picture that I post, she – that picture is from – is it's her at Pikes Peak. And, yeah, she's just, like – she's really pretty. She looks, like, really badass and, like, just, like, it's a, a beautiful picture. Um, but, yeah, so for those who don't know about Pikes Peak um, and specifically this race, it's a 12-mile, quote, race to the clouds on a dirt and gravel surface with huge drop-offs on the side. And we've done that. We've we've driven that road. So it is scary. Yeah. Pikes Peak is a 14er if you're not yeah. in Colorado and familiar with that. So that's yeah. a really big deal. Yeah. So um, and just one last thing from Michelle. This is what she said, her quote when she was talking about racing at Pikes Peak. She said, the Americans weren't prepared for us at all at Pikes Peak. They didn't know about turbo engines or European driving, and I was a woman. <laughs> I was like, okay, slay. Like, hey, yeah, literally. So that is Michelle Mouton. Maria Teresa de Filippis is another racer that I wanted to highlight. So she is she was Italian and she was the first woman to race in Formula One. Cool. So um, she competed as a Maserati factory driver from 1958 to 1959 and participated in five championship F1 races with a best finish of 10th at the 1958 Belgian Grand Prix Spa Francorchamps. 1958. Yeah. So <laughs> that was really cool. Um, she also finished runner up in an Italian sports car championship in 1954. So another inspiring woman. Um, and yeah, first woman to race in an F1 race. Paving the way. Paving the way. Um, I also wanted to highlight Danica Patrick. You might know this name. Um, no. she, <laughs> I'm like, okay. none of these are familiar to me. <laughs> okay. Um, Danica Patrick is the only woman to win an IndyCar race. And to take pole in NASCAR for the Daytona 500. So that's a big one. And she also has the most starts, laps led, and top 10 finishes of any woman in NASCAR Cup history. So she has inspired a lot of female racers. And she's also – she stopped racing in 2018. So she's very much, like, on the scene still. And so after she stopped racing, um, she started her career as a network TV analyst. So I actually recently saw her reporting at an F1 race on TV. So cool. So yeah, that was really cool because I was like, okay, that's cool. And mom was the one. Mom was like, I think that's Danica Patrick. And dad was like, I don't think so. And then we looked it up and it was. (laughs) Um, So yeah, 
very inspiring. Um, and someone said about Danica Patrick, they said perhaps her greatest contribution to motorsport are the legions of young women who've been inspired to follow in her steps. Yeah, I'm thinking of Bianca Bustamante, who we did a feminist highlight on a while back. Yes. But that's so cool because she's definitely like an up and coming racer. And so yes. all these women definitely paved the way for that. Yeah. So even though we already did a feminist highlight on her, I was she's our the last woman oh, that okay. I wanted to highlight. <laughs> so perfect segue. Um, but yes, Bianca Bustamante is someone who I really love. She is 19 and she is in the McLaren driver development program. And she was also in the F1 Academy and she did really well in that. Um, and yeah, she's just a very, um, she's a super young up and coming motorsport star and she's competed in both local and international karting competitions since she was five. So like I was saying, karting is like where a lot of people start out and that's where she started out when she was five. So that just wanted to highlight her. We'll put, um, yeah, we'll put all of these links in the show notes so that you guys can look for yourselves and figure out who, what, what your team is. My team is McLaren. So that's why I really love Bianca, but also, McLaren's been doing great in F1 recently. So yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments. My question is, I am extremely confused on what's the difference between Indy, NASCAR, Formula One. So they're all different cars. It's all different types of cars. So like they're all just like engineered differently. So, okay. So what's like the overarching umbrella? that they fall under. Does that make sense? Like, is it Formula One and then like NASCAR and Indy are under it? Is it NASCAR and then... From what I understand, for all of the formula, so they, it's a formula car. So Formula One, Two, and Three are racing formula cars. Karting, they're racing carts. I don't know if there's a more technical name. Um, NASCAR, I don't know what tight like what class of racing that is so so formula one has nothing to do with nascar like that's what i'm trying to get like are they affiliated with each other no there are different classes of racing so those cars like formula one cars are like very like sleek and aerodynamic and like very (laughs) skinny and nascar is like bulkier i can picture a nascar like i'm pretty sure like lightning mcqueen is like a yes NASCAR yes car, right is. like that style exactly yes okay. that's actually a perfect example so yeah they're different wow. <laughs> nascar is like there's also like um like drag racing and i can't think of any or, or like rally car racing like michelle mouton did so yeah we could do another episode i I think I want to have Kendrick on if we if I ever have to do a solo episode when you're in nursing school which please it's okay I don't want I don't want you to leave me but it's okay you know <laughs> um but if I ever have to do that I think I'll have him on because he's very knowledgeable about it and mm-hmm. he grew up watching NASCAR so he understands both sides okay so basically like everything we just covered is all formula 1 so yes. it has nothing to do with NASCAR or Indy. No. And they're all based on the type of car. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Yes. Because like I I have had it explained to me so many times, but it just never stuck. But that makes um, a lot of sense. Like it's literally just all the design of the car. Yes. Yep. That is that's what it is. Honestly, you've got it. Okay. Well, I think that I could give a breakdown if somebody asked me now. (laughs) Or like if you saw a video, you could just be like, okay, I think I'm watching like Formula One right now. Yeah. Like I think I could differentiate for sure. Yeah. So I actually kind of want to like go on TikTok and just watch some clips of like the different ones because 
I, I mentioned at the beginning, like I would like to go to a race at some point, but I want to go to one that I am more interested in. So I am going to do that and figure out what's cooler to me. Yeah. Yeah. You totally should. You could also watch um, the show Drive to Survive on Netflix. It's a documentary and it's like different seasons. I think there's like six seasons now, but they follow. It's like a reality show of the drivers. Mm. And so I I watched a few episodes of it and on I was like I can't like I can't Yeah, I'm like that's see, like seasons. that just doesn't sound appealing to me, but I but like, I like it, the idea. It was interesting. And then you get to learn the drivers and like really learn the sport. Um but also like I just have fun. I follow McLaren on Instagram, so I see a lot of racing stuff and mm-hmm. it's really interesting. And then I talk about it with Kendrick or like send videos back and forth. And then when he turns the race on, I watch it. Like it's fun. And I have another question. The team. So you mentioned McLaren, but then you also mentioned Red Bull. Like I thought it was all just like whoever's sponsoring them. So yeah, no, that's, that's, um, that's different. So, um, (laughs) I'm like, okay, I'm really having to like put my A game on because I really don't know that much. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. <Rob> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I know no, he's I there. This. I know. I'm like, where is he? Um, <laughs> but so yeah, no, there's different teams. It's not who's sponsoring. That confused okay. me too because I'm like Red Bull, but yeah. uh, Red Bull is, they just have a monopoly on everything. So they have like, you know, they have different teams of other sports too. I don't know if they okay. do. I don't know. But, because, um, well, because my follow-up question was like, okay, so, for example, is Red Bull the team name for Formula One? But then do they also have a NASCAR team? Do they also have um, – No. Indy? Okay. Okay. Let me just break this down for you really quick. So <laughs> NASCAR and, like, Indy, whatever, not connected to what I'm about to talk about. So okay. for Formula One – there's the 10 teams. So some team examples are Mercedes, which is Lewis Hamilton right now. Um, Red Bull. Um, uh, McLaren. Um, those are the only ones I can think of right now. Um, <laughs> but there's 10. <laughs> and so, okay. um, yeah, so there's like different team names. So like McLaren is like, I'm not even, no, whatever. I'm not going to go into that. But um, yeah, so those are just the team names. Not So sponsors. it just happens to be named Red Bull or Mercedes. Well, Mercedes, it's because Red Bull actually owns that team and they hired their own, they built their own racing team. McLaren Cars, because that's like a brand of car. Okay, I didn't know that. Yes, just like Mercedes is. And so those those companies created Formula One teams. And so they build the cars and they have their engineers and stuff. So like you could go, you could see a McLaren car like driving around the street. And that company owns that car just like they own the Formula One team. Okay. So it's okay, that. So it's company. just whoever owns it. Yeah. Okay. And Red Bull, they're just Red Bull. And, like, they happen to own a Formula One team, which is honestly cool because I'm, like, it's a very daring sport. And another thing I read – I will wrap this up. But when you were, like, asking if I thought they were athletes, I was reading an article that they have to resist, like, these crazy G-forces just like pilots because they're literally going over 200 miles an hour. Yeah. So so crazy. Yeah, like they have to be incredibly fit to do that. Yeah. So cuz you yeah. you have to have it, I feel like it takes endurance in a sense. Yeah. And not yeah. just physically but also mentally. Like you know how bored I would be? Like I hate driving. <laughs> I don't care if I'm going 200 miles an hour. I would be so <laughs> bored cuz you can't listen to music, I'm guessing. Like I mean, you're talking to people though. At least you can yap. Oh. Because you have like oh. a headphone on, but also okay, like you have to be focused. Either. You have to be really focused because like it's that's dangerous. True. Yeah. But honestly, that's real because you 
will not believe it. They do it like the races are like 60 laps. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I'm like 60 times going around a, a track, but like adrenaline, that would not I guess. be good for your disease. <laughs> no. <laughs> I so as you're talking, I'm thinking of like randomly that movie Gran Turismo that I was low key like always kind of wanted to see, but now I kind of want to watch it. Okay, I need you to watch it immediately okay. because okay. it is such a good movie and it will like really it will make you really want to watch it because it's also a true story. Yeah, I know, which was why I was like that's so cool. Also like Hopper from Stranger Things is in it, so I was like, okay. That's yeah. the reason I want to watch it, but it just looks so cool. So, now that I've had this little like crash course into racing and Formula 1, I'll watch yes. the movie. Yes, and eventually I'll do a part two and we can dive into like NASCAR and whatever else. (laughs) Okay, that would be cool to have Kendrick on. (laughs) Yeah, because I'm like, I'm just a chump over here. Like, I'm new. (laughs) So Okay, I need to say one thing before we wrap up. Yes. (laughs) You're going to laugh at this? What? What? (laughs) So it's very apparent that the sun has set where you are. (laughs) I... I was going to say this. That is so funny because I was going to bring that up and I was going to bring up, remember that guest that we had on and it was. Honestly, it was hilarious because like the whole time during the interview, it kept getting progressively darker darker, and we couldn't say anything. I wanted to laugh so bad strictly because of the lighting and you are in the shadows right now. So yeah, I I totally saw that like and I thought that 5 minutes ago and I was going to bring it up but then I was like okay this episode is literally 73 minutes long so I'm not going yeah. to but that is so No, I had to. I had to. I can't stop yeah. thinking about that. Yeah, I'm in the shadows and then this random light is scary so yeah, I'm like yeah. you could not see G walk behind you. Oh, <laughs> at all. If he popped up you would not know. Okay, well. <laughs> I guess it's Anyways. time to wrap up. <laughs> yeah, it's time to go. Um, thank you guys for <laughs> hanging in with us. We had a lot to catch up on, a lot of updates, a lot of exciting things going on. So go connect with us on socials. Leave a comment if you're listening on Spotify or on YouTube. And we will be back in two weeks with a brand new episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.